Welcome to another session of Integrated Circuit Layout. Today we are going to look at design rules that are used in the layout of integrated circuit. What are these design rules? Why are they there? Uh, we'll look at them shortly. The design rules are a set of rules that represent the physical limits of a particular manufacturing process. The, each the design rule would uh, specify the geometric and connectivity uh, restrictions the, in a semiconductor process. Now, these restrictions are necessary so that to, to ensure that after fabrication, most of the parts or most of the chips are working. Now, the semiconductor manufacturing process is not a precise process. There are lots, it is subject to lots of variances, as we will see shortly. Now, an example of the variance in the semiconductor process is shown here. Here you see that uh, they are trying to create metal lines or fingers of metal lines, which are of the same length and width. But as you can see very clearly, that the width at this junction, at this point, is much thinner than the width at this point. So it's, it is difficult to produce a uniform width in the, in the semiconductor process. The, similarly, if you look at the you compare the five fingers, the ones on the inside tend to look more similar compared to the ones on the outside. So uh, here we, can, we see the effects of the variance of the in the semiconductor processes. Now imagine if the original lines were much thick, thinner than this, and because of the variance in the semiconductor process, then at this point we would expect to see some breakage, and uh, that would be that may cause the chip not to function at all. Now let's look at what are the variances in the wafer fabrication process. There could be variations in the phot in photolithography. For example, there's mass misalignment. The, the photoresist shrink. For example, after the after you do a free bake. Then there is the variations in the material deposition. When you deposit a layer of let's say polysilicon, the thickness of the polysilicon may not be uniform, this would, could result in um, a change in resistances or and capacitances. Uh, your variation in iron implantation, so as a result your concentration in your active area, topic concentration in your active area may not be uniform. Variations in temperature, uh, as a result of the variation in temperature, the diffusion depth of the dopants in the active area are not uniform. Variation in the doping concentration, again due to temperature, and that also could affect res the resistivity or the capacitance uh, if you are creating a resistor or capacitor. Then uh, there is the variation in oxide thickness. The it could result in the non planarity and uh, that also can affect uh, the capacitors, certain types of capacitors. And uh, if you if you are building transistors, you need a very uniform gate oxide so as to control the threshold voltage. Uh, the presence of immunities again could reduce the resistance in the part in, in the conductors. And on top of all this variation in the process, in a, in a particular batch, 
you had have variations between lots. No? Because the substrate they are being used, the are different in the, each lot, the orientation of the wafers that have been placed uh, are also different. The variations across a wafer, uh, even within the same wafer, a die, or the, let's say, in the center and a die near the perimeter of the wafer, could have different uh, the, uh, produce uh, circuits which, with different behavior. So the, all these variations, take, taking all these variations into account, the, um, we need to have a set of design rules so as to minimize the effects of these variations on the the process uh, on the design process. So the, when doing layout, it's very important to follow the design rules as specified.